Okay, this is another Simulink um, tutorial, and this one's going to show you how to do state variable analysis. So, let's see, um, we have our Simulink browser up here. We need to um, create a new model, so I can click on the new model icon here. All right, let's move that guy over here. And what I'm going to put in there is a, a source. Let's do a... Um, yeah, let's just put a, um, oh, let's see, what kind of source do we want? How about a, um, our old friend, the step function? And then um, I'm going to need a, uh, mm, let's see, a plot. So let's put a scope here. And what we're going to use is um, the state variable analysis. Now, where is that stuff? There it is right there. Under the continuous block, um, there's our state space icon and this does state variable analysis and it sets up some state equations now you got to remember your state variable is x all right let's make this a little bit bigger here so we can talk about that state ver the state vector is x it's going to be n by one or you know two by one three by one whatever however many state variables you have and then x prime is going to be the same dimension but it's going to be the derivative of your state variables and then your output vector can be any dimension you want. But the bottom line is it's going to be a function of your state variables as well as any inputs. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect these guys up. Now, I'm going to tie this to a lecture we did in class, and in particular, lecture 21. So here's lecture 21, and what we have here is an RLC circuit. Okay, got an RLC circuit there. And uh, we've got a current going through here. All right, so there's my current right here going through there. And uh, I've got a voltage coming in, E sub n, which is going to be my step voltage. And then I've got a drop across the resistor, across the inductor, and across the capacitor. Now, for this circuit right here, what we're going to do is we're going to choose the current going through all these elements as a state variable and then the uh, voltage drop across the capacitor is a state variable because the inductor and the capacitor are energy storage devices okay so at that point you know you can analyze it in the s domain but let's just go through and analyze it in the time domain and when we go through and do the time domain we basically just do some kvls and some equations of voltages and currents um, um, across and through the devices and i end up generating a um, a state equation x prime equal to ax plus bu and the elements of those matrix after I do my KVLs look like the following right so here are my actual state equations now notice we chose as state variables the voltage across the capacitor the current through the inductor okay, so this guy right here is my x matrix or my x vector and then this guy over here is the derivative of my state variables okay and this matrix here is going to be my a matrix and this matrix here will be my b matrix and this guy right here will be my u matrix but it's, there's only one input so kind of think of that as just a one by one scalar all right well let's go ahead and uh, put these guys into um into Simulink. So let's see if I can get my um, Simulink model here. And I'm going to have to flip back and forth. I don't have enough real estate on the screen to do this. Well, what you do here, let's see if I can uh, scoot this guy over a little bit. Yeah, I could kind of scoot it over there and get both those guys on there. So I can double click my uh, little diagram there. And right now, these are all um, scalars. They're not uh, matrices. So my A matrix, so if I look over on the right here, is a 2 by 2. So I have to set up a 2 by 2. You know, and the way you do that is, um, well, let's see, 1, comma 1, that'd be the first row, 1, 1, that'd be the second row, and there's a 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, but that's not what I need. The first element's got to be a 0, all right? So we put a 0 into there. And then if you look at uh, the matrix over here uh, on the right, the next element is 1 over C. All right, so we've got a 1 over C, so let's put that into there. And then the element down here, the 2, 1 element, is a negative 1 over L. All right, so let's uh, make that negative 1 over L. And then the 2, 2 element is a negative R over L. All right, let's make that negative R over L. 
Okay. So there's your A matrix, a two by two. Okay. Now what's your B matrix? Well, the B matrix was uh, just what's going to be multiplied by the input, and that's a two by one. So it's going to be a zero and a one over L. So again, we have to set up a matrix. First row is zero. Semicolon separates the row. Next row would be L. All right. So A is a two by two. B is a two by one. Semicolon here separates the rows into the first row, next row. Okay. Now I need my C and D matrix. Well, I didn't write those out on the notes, but the C matrix, um, if you look up top here, it tells you that Y is a C times X plus D times U. Well, X is a two by two. Why don't I just make C the uh, identity matrix? First row, second row. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take C, which is a two by two identity matrix, multiply it by my X vector, which contains the voltage on the across the capacitor and current through the inductor. And then that's what Y is going to be. Well, any time I take an identity matrix times X, I just get X. So in that case, Y is just going to be my state variables. Now, I don't want to use any inputs here on D. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, since Y coming at the output is a uh, two by one here, I need to just set up a zero matrix there or a zero vector on D because I'm not going to bring any inputs in. I'm just going to map the state variables straight away. Okay? So I think at that point I have it. Well, now what we have to do is set up those values of R, L, and C. So let's go to MATLAB. And I'll use the command line window here. Clear all the other stuff. Clear the command line. And let's set R equal to 1.1. .1. Now I'm using these values because I use those in the lecture notes. L equal to 1, C equal to 1, and we kind of worked it uh, using MATLAB. All right. Well, let's get uh, all this stuff back up there, the browser, the window. Now I'm going to move this guy back over to here. I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. There's my state equations. And I'm going to run it. Okay. If I double-click my scope, well, look what I get out there. Those are my two state variables. Yeah, my two state variables. Remember the uh, x vector, the first element was the voltage across the capacitor. All right, that's your yellow line. And then the second variable was the current, current through those. Well, that's your purple line. And that makes perfect sense. What we're doing is we're applying a DC to an RLC circuit. Okay, as soon as we apply that step, which happens at time t equal to one, we are essentially charging up that capacitor. We get a little overshoot from resonance, and then it come back, and then it stabilizes at one volt. Well, the current comes along here, starts going through the resistor, the inductor, the capacitor. But as that capacitor starts to charge up, that current um, starts to go to zero and actually oscillates positive and negative here because energy is going back and forth between the uh, capacitor and the inductor, and then eventually is zero. So there you go. You've uh, solved for your two state variables. Now let's go back here and modify this guy and see if we can get more things in our output vector. Okay. We're not going to change A and B. That's set up. But what I can do here is I can say, well, let's see. How can I get the voltage across the, um, the resistor? Well, the voltage across the resistor is just R times I. All right. Well, that would be 0 times my first state vector and R, or state variable, and then R times my second one. Okay. So now I take 0 times the voltage across the capacitor plus R times the current through it. So R times I, well, that's the voltage across the resistor. So now I'm going to get three variables out in my Y vector. So Y now is going to be a 3 by 1. First element, voltage on the capacitor. Second element, current through the devices. Third element, voltage drop across the resistor. 3 by 1, which means C has to be a 3 by 2. X is still a 2 by 2. And then D equal times U. D is still a... Um, a zero vector, but now it's got a match in dimension, so I have to put another zero right there. All right, let's click OK. Okay. Let's run this guy. And now look what happened. I got three signals. For the RLC circuit, we apply a pulse or a step, and then the yellow is the voltage on the capacitor. Then I've got two signals that look like this. Well, what I did is I added the voltage drop across the resistor, but the voltage drop across the resistor is going to be in phase with the current. But remember, in this example, the resistance was 1.1. So the bigger line here 
is just Ohm's law, 1.1 times I. So the purple one would be the current, and then the cyan one would be the voltage drop across the resistor. And that makes sense. As we get current, we get drop across the resistor. As the current goes to zero, the drop across the resistor goes to um, zero. Okay. Well, let's see. So what else can we put in here? We've got the voltage drop across the capacitor, voltage drop across the inductor, the current. Let's do the voltage drop across the uh, inductor. Okay, now that's going to be a little bigger. So what I need to do is I need to add another row to my uh, uh, matrix here. But then at this point, I've got to figure out, well, what is EL equal to? And what you basically do here is a KVL. The input voltage EN is equal to ER plus um, EC plus EL. EL is equal to EN minus EREC. Okay. So what that tells me is I have an EN in this term. So the D matrix is going to have a 1 for an EN, but then I need a negative EL and a negative EC. So I'm going to put a negative 1 there for a negative EC. And I'm going to, oops, actually, just that right, negative EC. Then I'm going to need a negative E. Well, a negative ER is a negative R times I. So I'm going to need a negative R right there. So this guy is going to be a negative 1 times the X, which is VC, EC. And then it's going to be a negative R times I, which is going to give me a negative ER. And then I have to add this one in there. So my fourth variable will be the voltage on the inductor. All right, let's run that. See if I... And yeah, great. The yellow one is the voltage on the capacitor. The uh, purple one is the current. The blue one is the voltage on the resistor. And then um, the red one here is the voltage on the inductor. Notice we can have an instantaneous change of voltage on the inductor, but then that voltage starts to drop off. And then, of course, as soon as the current goes to zero, that voltage on the inductor goes to zero. Let's add another variable to our output vector, which is going to be the sum of ER, EL, and EC. Okay, so now I've got to add another row to my output uh, vector. And here, what I want to do is I want to add up ER, EC, and EL. Well, I can put a 1 there, which will pick up the EC term. Now, the next variable of my state vector is an I, so I need to multiply that by R. So that will give me E sub C, E sub R, and then, let's see, I want E sub C, E sub R. I need E sub L. How can I get E sub L in there? Well, that's going to be a little trickier. Actually, I don't even want to do it that way, do I? What I want here is to do this. Zero, zero for my last row. So I don't pick any of my state variables. But what I do down here is I just pick up E sub N. And there you go. Now that will put in E sub N, the input voltage there. And let's run that. And there you go. Yeah, so if I, um, again, summarizing, the yellow is the voltage drop across the capacitor. The purple here is the current. The cyan is the re drop across the resistor, which is in phase with the current. The red is the voltage drop across the inductor. And then if I add up the yellow, the cyan and the red, those guys actually give me green. And I think that's right, yeah, because at time t equal to 1, the inductor has all the voltage, and the capacitor doesn't have any, the resistor doesn't have any, and then as the current starts coming along, the inductor voltage drops, but the resistive voltage uh, increases along with the capacitor voltage, and it all sums up to be green right there. And then all the, uh, the voltages on the inductor and the resistor drop off to zero and the entire step voltage is across the capacitor. So that's kind of neat. You know, just by setting up state equations, we basically simultaneously solve differential equations. And um, all I had to do was solve for two state variables. And my plot over here is uh, uh, illustrating, what, five variables? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. All right. Well, that ends a uh, little lecture on state variable analysis. That should uh, help you on your lab. Thanks.